Good morning and welcome to this edition of Unwanted Opinions. I'm your host, Justin, here with stand-in co-host, Jesse James. Good morning. Stand-in fact checker and guest guy on the couch, Greg Weslowski. <laughs> Executive producer Dave's here in the studio handling the live streaming. Thank you, Dave. We're broadcasting live at a workspace collective. We're happy to be here, and I'm happy to say that it was yet again another beautiful morning in downtown Ocala. Especially Man. beautiful today. It was a brutal uh, winter. I'm glad we got <laughs> to yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that one week weeks. of winter was yeah, <laughs> terrible. Uh, yeah, windows down driving this morning. Absolutely beautiful. I loved it. Um, yeah, this is like... How do we like just keep that weather the majority of the year round? We could do that, especially during summer. Yeah, when it's ninety-eight degrees when you wake up. September you... almost broke me this year. It was so bad. Like September? Summer... Yeah. Because you know when in September you're just like it's because it's still hot and it's hurricane season. Like I've discovered one of my so primary career goals now. Super humid. I want to be a reverse snowbird. I want to leave Florida <laughs> July, August, and September. <laughs> right. Like and when like hurricane season is over, come back. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It's just a matter of like if we're going to do it in a camper, if we're just going to like rent a space, because like September just freaking killed me this year. Yeah, it's hot. Yeah, it's and it's rough. been hot for like five months at that point. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, we're we're over it. I actually, uh, yeah, I I like the heat. I don't, you know, I mean, if I know that I'm like going to be sweating, I'm okay. If if I if I'm dressed super nice and I don't want to. Like that's if one drop of yeah sweat on me, then that's annoying. But every other time, like you know, it's hot. Dress for being hot, and just be okay with it. Like, yeah, but it rains every day. Is the problem? Like uh, you can't go out. Like you know, as well as I do, we like kayak. Yeah, but like, it rains for twelve stuff. minutes. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> but the threat is always there. So you're not gonna like go load up the gear and like go out and do everything. Or like uh, we have a running joke in like my job where like I'm like, all right, getting off work, getting ready to go. Might go ride the bike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't sound like a funny joke, actually. Yeah, it wasn't. No, <laughs> it's, it's terrible from my part. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a real bad joke. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't mind, you know, I mean, you just know what it's going to do. It's like, all right, about two to three, it's going to rain, and then uh, we're good after that. Like, and it's going to get 40 degrees warmer. <laughs> yeah. I'm good with it. So we're going out to Denver next week, so my buddy sent me a screenshot of his weather app, and it was negative eight. Um, so on the way to Max last night, I sent him a picture where it was 84. And I was like, what, <laughs> what a wild thing. And there's a 100 deg degree spread. Yeah, that's, uh, that's intense. Was it 84 yesterday? Uh, that's what it said on my phone. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I don't remember getting that warm. Like no afternoon. But maybe it just, you know, because it's not so humid, maybe it wasn't just bearing down on me. I don't know. Yeah. yeah I don't was... know cold. Is there a big difference between 30 and negative 8? In my <laughs> mind, no. Yeah. Because it's like I'm shivering at that point. You got the puffer jacket and clothes on at that point, so. Hopefully. No, I can handle 30 degree weather in like, you know, a, a light sweater and shorts. You getting down to zero is, is kind of terrible. I don't think, I suppose that's like the big difference is 90 degrees, you can still be out in it overnight. You're just like going to like, there's no threat of dying. <laughs> Fair. In yeah. 90 yeah, degree yeah. weather. That's true, yeah. Whereas, like, you get drunk, you make a mistake up north. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, like, they yeah. found some college kid out in front of somewhere the other day who probably, right. like, got lost into elements. Popsicled. Yeah, there's no threat of death. The first time I ever had to, like, drive in snow, I remember talking to a cop, and she was like, yeah, just, you know, don't go down that road. You know, it's, we close it off for a reason. Um, she was telling us where we could illegally go to snowboard, by the way, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she's like, yeah, we'll close it off for a reason. You know, at least, you know, once every other winter, we, you know, when the road unthaws, we, you know, we find a, a car down there, a little body down there. She just said it so nonchalantly. And I was like, oh, yikes. Like, well, thing that happens. do they die? And then they, she's like, no, they, they get stuck. Then they die. I'm like, oh, oh fun. why do people deal with this? That's terrible. Yeah. I like the cold weather. And I can take the cold weather, but I'm, I've, I'm just lazy. So I don't want to deal with, like, mud rooms and, like, scraping my car off. In the like, Shoveling snow in the morning? Yeah, yeah I'm just impatient. You. Like, I don't want to deal with all of that. I, just, I like one layer of clothing. Just get a heated driveway. Yeah, right. Is that there a you thing? Go. That's, 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 I would, I mean, it should be. I mean, I'm sure there's... <laughs> I'm sure rich people out there. You, know, you, <laughs> yeah. to, right. you got a heated driveway, or you just got someone that takes care of it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Whichever yeah. one is, whichever one is cheaper. I'm so <laughs> impatient that I'll handle being cold instead of having a jacket because I don't want to just have to carry my jacket around. I hate carrying. So that's the one thing I hate about 
super cold. You have to get bundled up to right. go somewhere and then get undressed to be comfortable once <laughs> yeah. you get there. Coat right. rooms are a thing up north. Yeah. yeah. Like coat yeah. checks yeah. and coat yeah. rooms are I'm, things that like you never think about. You're like, oh, coats. Yeah. But Jesse, you're a fashion aficionado. Do you like have coats you get to wear like once or twice a year? Oh, like I'm, I'm about to have so, to put coats up, and I'm like, I'm oh, super yeah. excited about this trip because I have boots and coats that I uh-huh. have that, boots, that I have no business <laughs> wearing. And so, yeah. like I know, like like, to and I, I just got like an awesome new like thrift coat and everything, and I'm about to put it up in like two weeks. And there's yeah. like like, and I have like thrift coats in the back for like events and everything. I'm like, I'm gonna have to just throw these away this year, or like put them back in the thrift because I never even wore them this year. For someone like, that wears jackets as little as I do, I have way too many. I I have quite the selection that I pull out, yeah, once or twice a year. That I'm like, wear the same too. Yeah, like winter wardrobe. Yeah, and I, I got a bunch. Yeah, winter wardrobe in Florida is like about three weeks. Yeah, that's <laughs> that. So if you guys had to guess at what the biggest streaming service is, visual streaming, not music streaming, what do you think it would be? YouTube. Vimeo. Say it again. Vimeo. 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 <laughs> Peacock. Like not Peacock. Netflix, not Amazon Prime, but Vimeo? Yeah, just throwing out a random one. Okay, that's fair. Uh, you actually hit it, and I shouldn't ask the tech guy this question. <laughs> it's Yeah, it's YouTube. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> here's what's crazy is uh, Google bought YouTube in 2006, which is – or yeah, YouTube started in like 2005. I didn't realize they bought it that early on. But they didn't break out earnings until 2020. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the whole time it was just bundled under the, you know, Alphabet or whatever <clears throat> Google's parent company is. And uh, so in 2020, they started breaking it out. And in 2021, they profited 31 or $34 billion. With a B. W- with a B, where Netflix was at $30 billion, which is insane. I had no, like, there are some people that I talk to that are like, oh, yeah, I'm on YouTube all the time. I'm like, I got to start wearing my headphones more because I just like, I don't, I, I, there's rarely a time where I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to pull up YouTube unless I'm specifically looking for something. Right, right. Yeah. And that's, but I guess with the <clears throat> the amount of stuff that's on YouTube, right. far eclipses the amount of stuff that's on any other streaming service. I literally live on YouTube all day. <clears throat> yeah. At my job, I have, I listen to lo-fi hip hop. Right. And like, I, I tell, well, my funny thing is people are like, oh, I have Spotify as my subscription service. I have YouTube. Or at first it was Google, or first it was Google Music and then it was YouTube Music. I haven't had, I've had ad free YouTube for like 10 years now. Okay. Yeah. And like, I go to people who put on YouTube and there's an ad. I'm like, what is this abomination? <laughs> right. Like, That's drop the money, feel. get ad free YouTube because you get the YouTube streaming service and then you get ad free YouTube. Huh. So, like, literally at my work, I have my monitors. I have lo fi hip hop on in one monitor because, you know, it's just like good, dumb background music. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm working. So, like, yeah, my whole life. And then I actually just made the transition for my podcast. Google has a uh, an app on their phone for podcasts now. So all my podcasts are under that. It's about like, and being the tech guy and everything, it's about like the environments that you live in these days, which we can get into monopolies and all that. But like my entire life is in Google. Like if you wanted to write a psychological yeah. profile on me these days, you could pull right. up my Google. Like Google knows everything about yeah. me. It's yeah. terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very, I remember reading something a couple years ago where this guy's like, yeah, if I have access to just one of your emails, like just 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 knowing the address, mm-hmm. he's like, I can I can within like a five percent, um, you know, variance tell you who you're gonna vote for, what you're gonna do, like, mm-hmm. it's pretty interesting stuff. But uh, yeah, I had no idea. I mean, I know, and it, what's funny is like in my notes that I wrote on my phone initially, I started down like the antitrust, oh like, yeah, rabbit hole because oh, I'm like, go, how baby. can we know? We're not, not prepped for all that uh-huh. as we stream on Facebook as Live. As we stream on <laughs> yeah. Facebook Live, yeah. It's just wild to me, especially when they, it's like, how, how did it take them that long to break out the earnings for YouTube? And then also like, here's the, this is why I started going down the, the antitrust monopoly type stuff is the second, the world's second largest search engine is YouTube. Mm-hmm. So you have the yeah. first is Google and the second is YouTube. That's the, the most searches happening with the most results in the largest database, which is insane to me. Yeah, that's wild. <clears throat> the, yeah. So Christy said that it's kids on, on YouTube all the time. And I know that my kids for sure, like I have to like give them YouTube limits 
Because I, I, I'm not going to watch what they're watching all the time, mm -hmm. right? But I also know that, like, I've got to be careful because one video can lead to the next, can lead to the next, and they're watching some weird crap or, you know. Didn't something like, happen with kids, like, yes. years ago where there were just these random, like, AI-generated videos yes. that were just, but it was, like, frying their brains or something yeah. like that? It was that. super weird, for Man, sure. Man, I don't know how y'all have kids these days. Yeah, That's and terrifying. I mean, don't get me wrong, YouTube does a good job of, like, getting, you know, filtering that content and making it kid specific like when we up when i upload our podcast on youtube it's like is there anything in here meant, meant for kids is there anything in here that's specifically not meant for kids you know they do a pretty good job but my kid like my six-year-old he's like yeah youtube kids is boring I'm like yeah dude i know <laughs> but but on the other hand if you had any plumbing problems recently youtube yeah like, I mean, like the yeah. amount of like there used to be like gatekeep Gatekeep knowledge before. Right. Now the now all the world is like knowledge of the world is right there. Like if, if you want to spend enough time on YouTube, you don't gotta go to college. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, you, right. Can learn said, you don't gotta go to college. <laughs> <laughs> you don't gotta go to college these days if you really want to learn yeah. how to code or do something like that. Uh I, I think that's very true in a in a limited sense for sure. Um one of the most hurtful things that my wife ever said about me <laughs> related to YouTube. <laughs> Someone goes <laughs> Is he handy? To which I think, <laughs> yes, absolutely I am. But to my wife, she goes, no, but he's good at like watching YouTube videos. <laughs> like, you what? <laughs> What did you just say? <laughs> Meanwhile, it's 2 a.m. and Justin's scraping his right. seat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? what? Yeah, like, okay, I'm sorry I didn't know about the specific chipset for our washer that I had to go on, like, okay, this chipset versus, you know, the GE chipset. But, like, I know what I'm looking for and how to solder and all that to get it done. That's handy. Like, yeah. right. Yeah. Like, right? Yeah. Like, I couldn't do that. Like, I, you, my so, version of that is plumber. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You know what I mean? I'm going to have to get a new so, washing machine. Yeah. Right. Right, so now I'm like breaking stuff because I'm trying to fix it without watching YouTube tutorials. Like, I had this thought last I'll night. Here's a great idea. question. We have this this conversation frequently. So like you did that on YouTube and everything. Do you all put a time – do you put a monetary value on your time? Oh, absolutely. Which is like, like I put mine at around 25, 30 bucks an hour. Where like where I see people are like gonna go stand in line for a pizza for two hours. No, I'm like, you know what I mean? Like where people see like free stuff and there's like so in a repair, which you're a handy guy. Like I have to like pull the I, like I have to pull out two bikes out of my garage to get to my tools these right. days. So bad. <laughs> so like I put like if like this project is gonna take me more than two hours and I gotta buy a tool, I'm calling a guy. Oh, so you yeah, get handy. Right. What's for your sure. threshold for like calling a guy? Um, well, so that 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 changes. It depends on. You know, if I'm at work, I'm not I'm not doing anything, right? They, they're, my time is more valuable, you know, related to the things that I do on the, the upper tier of management, right? At home, is this something I can do after the kids go to bed? And I like to do it. It takes my mind off of it, like, by all means. And can I buy a tool and do this? <laughs> like, I get excited about the, like, oh, cool. You know, when we did our flooring, I'm like, all right. Awesome, in my budget for flooring, I get to get a new um, chop saw and a new table saw, and I'm like, this is awesome because now I get to use these for other projects. And so the flooring is a great example because I did the same thing. I'm, I'm of the mindset of, um, same thing, you know, how long is it gonna take me and how much money is it gonna cost? And so for the flooring, I'm like, oh, I saved thousands of dollars doing it myself, and I get new tools. As opposed to when we took down walls, I'm like, I can do drywall, right? It's not my favorite to do, but I can do it. Is it gonna be the cleanest? Probably not, but I can do it. And so we took down a couple walls and we had a, a hole. In, and honestly, the hole in the ceiling is what did it for me because again, there's no wall there anymore. And so for that one, I literally added up the drywall. I added up my time. The tools were, you know, really wasn't that big of a deal for that. And I was like, oh, by all means, I'm gonna spend the extra 30% on this to get this done, you know, relative to what I'm doing because that 30% is under a thousand bucks as opposed to if that were 30% on 5,000 bucks, uh -huh. I'd be doing it myself. Everything you just said made complete sense. To yeah. Me. <laughs> so I definitely, I, I very much budget my time exactly like that. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's a, it's important to do so. Even with like oil changes is a good example. I, someone said to me at one point, like, oh, you don't do that yourself? I'm like, I used to, mm. but now it's 
sometimes it's even less for me to get have someone else do it than for me to buy the yeah. oil and dispose of it myself. And the timing, like I can literally pull up, they're under my car, it's done, you know, like, yeah, by all means, I'm having someone else do that, even though I very much know how to change my own oil. And brakes is getting to that point too. Like, am I gonna do my own brakes? Probably not. Yeah, same. Do you want it done good or you want it done right? Right. See, that's right. another right. one of my yeah. things. Like, yeah. I could probably do it. It might be a little loose, and I don't know <laughs> what that is. Or just like drop the extra couple bucks. Although trying to find a plumber these days. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Like, Shout that's out. A... Use Johnson Brothers. They've always been great for us. Really. But honestly, any kind of uh, any kind of trade like that is super hard. Uh, there's there's one specific trade that I know a few people in, so I don't want to say anything. But it's all, I have a hard time getting them out to do to do jobs at my house. It's electric. I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> like to get like a small job done for less than two hundred bucks uh, yeah. is, Electricity and that's one of those where like, do you want it? Would you say done or done right mm-hmm. or something? Done yeah, you want it done, done or you done yeah. done right? Yeah, right. So with electric, I can do it. But there are certain things where I'm like, if this is a fire hazard, I'd rather make <laughs> yeah. sure we're testing in the There's also run. risk of death in there. Yeah, I'm not yeah, so yeah, yeah. worried like, about that one because I know where to shut the power off. But like, uh-huh. if I turn it back on and I didn't, you know, I didn't wire something right and it, you know, sparks and my house catches fire, then I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. that's just like one of those things. I'm like, I'm not going to touch that. Right. Because like, I know nothing about it. And that's a complex thing. Where it's like. And there are certain things like trades, like you never, like I know there's a big like push for trade school and everything these days. Back when it was like, oh, go take out student loans for everything, yeah. like. But now, like the trades, I tell everybody, like if I were like in my career and everything in IT, I'm like, just get into IT and ride the wave. You never know where you're going to end up. And like same thing, I'm like, you want like good steady work here in Florida? <laughs> yeah. Air conditioning, uh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. You're never going to want for work in air conditioning. Yep. Yeah. My buddy Ray, Ray Powell, we were at a friend's birthday celebration, and uh, he's like, all right, I got to go. I'm like, what's up, man? He's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm working. He's in HVAC. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm on call. I got a call. I got to go run out. I'm like, dang. But he just stays busy nonstop. Mm, you know? yeah, your great goes business. out in the summer. You need it now. Yeah. I pay money. <laughs> Speaking of value and paying money for things, every summer I drop like 90 bucks and I have my air conditioned service. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, and it's like, good. what is it? Like May, I have it done. Yeah. Yeah. Like just because you, we live in Florida. That's right. like your life's blood. If it's yep. like August and your AC goes mm-hmm. on, you're dropping two, three hundred bucks <laughs> on a hotel room. <laughs> yeah. You right. know what I mean? You're not. You're Whatever not staying it takes. In that. Yep. Like hurricanes are terrifying. <laughs> right. Like, all right. So here's like Florida boy thing. Right. Hurricanes are terrifying. The real bad part of hurricanes is how long you're out of power in the couple right. of days afterwards. Yeah. You know? right. Like you get drunk during the hurricane. Right. Yeah. We like the drinking. We like the grilling. It's the it's the heat. <laughs> yeah. Like right, right after the no hurricane passes and it's like 86 degrees yeah. out in August or right. September. Yep. That's the bad part of the hurricane there. Yeah, yeah, that's the very uh, privilege. I, I, the, it always makes me think, like, why would people have moved down here before AC? Oh, like, what what were you thinking? Could you imagine? No, I can't. The smells. Yeah. I always think about this whenever uh, people are like, oh, man, I wasn't born in the right era. I was meant to be a Viking and yeah, live in medieval yeah. times. I'm like, yeah, right. what it smelled like back then? <laughs> God. Like before, like plumbing, like 1776, the good old days. <laughs> yeah. What did it smell like when they were signing the Constitution awesome. in uh, July in Philadelphia yeah. in a room with no air conditioning? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? The like I know they had like incenses and candles and all that and everything, but that's always what gets to me, the smells of the cities back then. I'm a huge proponent of just dealing with the stench rather than trying to mask the stench with incense or candles or air fresheners. There's nothing worse to me than being in a bathroom and then like that automatic air freshener goes off with like the watermelon spray and I'm like, it just smells like someone took a dump in a watermelon patch. Like, this is just worse. Now I don't want to eat watermelon. What a nice place to take a dump though. A watermelon watermelon patch. Uh, like if you ever experience. kind of thought, if you ever like walked into a gas station bathroom and been yes. like, "This is nice," like Yo, those surprising yeah, yeah, yeah. ones where you just walk into, you're like, "I'm stopping on 40 on the right. way out to the beach or something. I'm going to stop by this thing and like <laughs> right. hold my breath and like." And then you walk in there and it's like painted and they're scented candles. Yeah. Like obviously someone nice already. You're like, "Well, this is a pleasant surprise." I had to go 
uh, when I was heading down to like Tampa or St. Pete or something, and I was in a weird, I was using back roads for whatever reason, and I was like, oh man, there's this like little po dunk run down looking gas station. I'm like, whatever, I'll just, you know, get it done quickly. And I walked in. And it was like they literally had like candles and like a rug, <laughs> and it was one of the cleanest I've ever seen. And I like I come back in, and I talked to the guy. I was like, the, by far one of the most amazing bathrooms. <laughs> like not even gas station bathrooms, but just bathrooms I've ever walked in. He's like, he's like, man, I'm I'm here 24 hours a day. This is my gas station. Like that's where I go. Like no, no, no. Like I take very good care of it. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's, thanks for letting me poop in it. <laughs> I'll buy you. So, so <laughs> like, thank you. Give him an extra yeah. five for me. Like, yo, <laughs> right. man, like, I will come See, here again. Yes. Five out of five would recommend. Right. See you again. Dude, Yelp review it, incoming. Man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So I, I'm just I'm still blown away by the streaming giant there. I'm glad that you guys know that. Um, the numbers scale. Yeah. yeah. So like, and I think you guys were talking about this last week. You know, Tesla is worth more than the entire auto industry. <clears throat> yeah, that's wild. Yeah, <clears throat> like the, which I think it's all like fake numbers and everything. <clears throat> things that don't make sense. But like General Motors, Toyota, every car that you see driving out there, they roll out millions of lines for the manufacturers, and you're going to tell me Tesla is worth more than all of them combined? Yeah. It's just it's it's tech. The numbers in tech are mind boggling. Yeah, I was going to say that it's 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 tech is the bigger thing there, and it's mm-hmm. you know their their technology isn't just cars either. There's so much more that goes into just mm-hmm. their cars, but really what it is is that's the market also saying like, hey, we believe in this. Mm-hmm. Doesn't doesn't mean it's going to last forever. I mean, you look at someone like a GE, mm-hmm. you know, where it's like you know for a long time, or or a better example would be like a Sears because GE still does a lot of things that I don't think people are really aware of, turbine engines and stuff like that. But We own everything, so you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Like the big mega conglomerates, you don't realize right. they're mega conglomerates. But it's yeah. people that go, not only do, you know, do I think that this is a worthwhile, or you know, do I think this is value has value now, but I think it has value in the future. Yeah. And that's like the beauty of the stock market is going, I get to invest in something that I think is going to be good long term, and therefore it helps build that company. Mm-hmm. And I think that there's obviously, you know, some uh, you, there's a lot of fanboyism that goes into that. But you know, I look at that and I go, there was no other than Fisker. You know, there was really no one else doing electric vehicles, and Tesla pushed the the envelope on it, and now. Pressure. I mean, you have you have a company like Dodge that still doesn't have an electric vehicle out. It's like, yeah. is Dodge still its own company? Or uh, they Ram. GM? It's Ram. I think. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, they're, they're, uh, it's. I don't know. It's, it's all. It's all. Fact checker. Together. But I mean, you have a today. you have a large. <laughs> yeah, you have a large company that that doesn't have an electric vehicle. You mm-hmm. know, or I just to me, it's like I, there's some weird like anti-Tesla, anti-SpaceX like movement that's happening, which I don't totally understand. Elon's a weirdo. I get that Elon's a weirdo, but to me, I, literally, I've seen this, like, why do we even have to go to space Te- you know, tweeted from an iPhone? And it's like, how do you think that crap happens? Like, It's just like, for every action, there's an equal and opposite yeah, reaction. Like, and good haters point. gonna hate good and point. everything. Good point. And, like, and I think like Elon does like a lot of really dumb stuff. And like, honestly, like here's the difference. Elon is in the tech industry. There is a lot of BS in the tech industry as like the biggest example of it being that one chick, the Theranos right, lady. Theranos. And then I don't Hi. know if you heard the big I'm thing with WeWork and Adam Newman, um, whatever her name was. Yeah. Like there is a there is a very thin line between um, You sound a little Elizabeth anti-feminist Holmes. right now. Huh? You're bringing up uh, only bad cases of women right now. Well, Elon and this girl, <laughs> there's a, well, no, there's, and there's Adam Newman, who is the WeWork guy as yeah. well. There's a very thin line between Elon and that girl. Because if Elon, if they didn't make the Tesla work, Elon was going to turn into her. No. Like, she just didn't, she you, believed so much that that technology, she could, like, will it into existence like Steve Jobs yeah. did. And there's a lot of BS you're, in the you're, tech you're, industry like that. There's a lot of dots in between those two that you're, mm-hmm. you're connecting that I I'm, I vehemently disagree with. Well, I'm talking, like, the salesmanship of the tech industry. Sure. Because Elon's smart about how much of these things has he personally developed, whereas, like, he just put a brain trust together and hoped that that brain trust yeah. would do it. I, I, and and okay, Steve Jobs and every other person ever, mm-hmm. right? Like I, I'm not saying that he's the smartest person in the world, and I'm not even like I'm not I'm not shouting him out. I'm just saying I under I don't quite understand the hate that that popped up. Other than like he creates it himself, but to to 
to connect him even loosely to uh, to Holmes or whatever from Theranos. If you've done any looking into this, if you don't guys don't know what Theranos is, it was a company that basically said, we're going to test all of your medical background or issues or anything like that by a simple blood test, right? Mm-hmm. And, and the issue there is it was very evident on the front end that that was never going to work. Like you have to like be be science and medically ignorant to even think that that would work Mm -hmm. because there's so much involved in what you're trying to do that a simple blood test isn't going to do, right? Where I I agree that there's salesmanship, but there's salesmanship backed off of like, hey, this is actually going to work. And I don't care if someone puts together a team and says, this is the product and I'm not the head of it. Like Mm -hmm. he he technically is the lead engineer of SpaceX, right? Mm -hmm. Now that's still just a title that he's given himself. Mm -hmm. But at least he's going, oh, I'm the guy that's in, in trouble if things go really, really awry. I've taken that heat off of someone else, even though it's a whole team. Mm-hmm. right? But I don't think he's the one going like, oh, okay, well, structurally, this is going to work or not going to work. And it's and my point being in the tech industry, which because of her, like, and she, she was like running parallel to Elon back when it was like five, ten years ago when it was like, move fast and break things. And the investors were just coming in and throwing money at right. it. When at the time, like those same investors were probably – and like it's just like – it's that sphere of money we talk about in tech right. where like – Google can profit twenty three billions and probably buy like Sears with right. like pocket change, you know, where right. there's that much money running around where it's all like speculative trading. Where like and that's what happened with Elizabeth Holmes. It's what happened with WeWork and everything. There's just so much money to throw at it. Yeah, it might work or not. Yeah. yeah. Elon it worked out for and there's a little bit more behind and he made the electric right. vehicle work. And even SpaceX isn't a part of Tesla. That's still right. privately owned. Right. So it's just there's so much money running around there these days. But more research is being done into these tech people. Yeah, I, I agree that uh, there's a lot of speculative trading. I mean, that's that's the whole point of trading too. It's like oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hedge my bets, and if you you know did it incorrectly on Elizabeth Holmes, mm-hmm. you know you, you lost a lot. She actually reminds me of the I can't remember the car brand. There Day was Wu. no, Day it wasn't Daewoo. Wu. It was um, the, I think HBO <laughs> did a special about oh the girl the lady yeah the first like trans yeah. That was a phenomenal. Yeah, so where it guys, was like it was the same thing. She was like purely a hustler. Yeah, totally. Like the technology did not exist. Total grifter. But she made it sound. But she was such a good. She was like tech giants before tech giants. Yeah. So there's this. It's a, a lady that <clears throat> was pushing a three wheel three wheeled vehicle. I think out of California originally. Mm-hmm. And then uh, yeah, basically it all you know it was, when it was all said and done, it was. It was, you know, a, a scam. And I don't think it started that way. I think that she genuinely thought that, oh, I'm going to get this going and I, I think I can make it work and just believed her own lie and then just got, got caught up in it. The Lady in the Dale? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. The Dale. Phenomenal, that's what it is. Phenomenal yeah. series or a documentary series. Yeah. But yeah, that was like tech before tech. And I think that was one right. of the things. She believed genuinely that the technology would catch up to her own sales. And when it didn't, it was a house of cards that fell But again, out. that's also an ignorance thing. Like mm-hmm. when you when you talk to the engineers that were working for that company, they're like, yeah, it wasn't going to happen. And so, and that's what I think about with Elizabeth Holmes is like, you should have known, right? You can't, it's, it's neat to like have the idea, but by the time you have like an intelligent person go, oh the, yeah, you're missing like key components here. Like you obviously can't do this. Like that's when you gotta go, oh, okay. Yeah, and that's what's amazing about it is there is just enough hype behind it. It's like there's a um, remember where we got into the the curve of things that like once like someone's interested, I don't want to hear the curve exponential exponential (laughs) growth. I think is what I'm looking for. Where like she hit a certain point where there was enough investors buying in, and she got enough people behind it, they started throwing money at it. it Much like um, Uber is like another primary example of it. Where like the fantasy. Remember five years ago, y'all, when everything was going to be automated driving cars, Mm -hmm. yeah, and like. These days we're just like, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm still waiting on flying cars. <laughs> I have to take it back real quick. Your wife uh, chimed in and said, "Okay, screw you." I said, "I didn't think you were handy when we were fresh and didn't have any projects going on." <laughs> ah, okay, gotcha. I'm gonna let her uh, get away with that, even though she said that like two years ago. So. <laughs> hey, but thanks for listening, wife. Yeah, I gotta be careful. I forget that uh, some of those stories. 
head on out. That this thing's live. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, let's hop off of Theranos and, and YouTube and all of that. Theranos, that's a, I want to have a separate conversation about that, though. But I'm in, baby. Uh, yeah, it, it can be super boring. Oh, no, it just leads into more of like the tech stuff. That's just a rabbit hole forever. So I, I see you looking at the the subjects I have over there. One of the things I want to talk about is that it says NYT revenue, and that's New York Times revenue, which... In 2020, I think it was, and you, you, I'm gonna have to like double check myself because I didn't write my notes down. Um, <laughs> Nick said, "Dave asks JT how he got bested by a moron yesterday." I'll, I'll get into that. But New York Times revenue, as of like, I think the latest was 2019 or 2020, was still about 60% was subscriptions. In 2021, 55% is just like games and puzzles and. Like their their majority of their revenue has is not coming from subscriptions for news now, which is insane. To, well, it is and it isn't insane to me. I let my New York Times subscription lapse. I think last year, mm. um, because whatever. I won't get into all that. Like I have a lot of news subscriptions, and my my current one, which I'm about to be done with, I, I have still a couple. But the one that I like the least. And I don't know if I should even say it, but it's the Ocala Star Banner. Oh, no, it's a conglomeration these days. I get crap off of it. Right. I get better news off the Gazette these days than the Star Banner. It's it's so – I'm. it's important to me to have local news mm -hmm. because we need to know what's going on in our community. Like we are so disconnected in a lot of ways that when you now have a conglomerate news company, which it has been for a while, but it just seems to be getting further and further away from Ocala. Do you follow the Gainesville Sun and the Ocala Star Banner and they do the simultaneous oh, things? Oh, yeah. And you're seeing, yeah. You're seeing the same And there's probably stuff. like several other – like they're just pulling AP stories down. Right. It's all it's all AP stories, very little local stuff, and and when it is, I, so I get an email yesterday, and I think they may have sent a correction, so I'll be careful about what I say. But I get an email yesterday, and it's like, oh, by the way, uh, we're giving you more premium stories, so your your price isn't going up, but you're just going to have to renew your subscription more because we're going to take credits at your your subscription, and I'm like, what a, what a sham, you know, I. I'm just going to let that lapse, too, because I'm like, no, I'm not going to pay more for news stories that I'm not reading because you decided that you're going to give me more of those. Like, oh, our price isn't going up. We're just going to give you more and, and take credits out of your account. Like, okay, you yeah, know that's, what? That's weird. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I saw this morning. It was like, whoops, we sent an email. So I, I'll read it, and I'll update in the comments of if they said, all right, never mind. We're not doing that. And pr what what are the premium stories? So they have like subscriber only stories, which it, basically subscriber only stories are local stories. Okay, and I'm okay. I will pay money if I know I'm going to get quality local news. Now, if I start getting like heavily opinionated pieces, I'm out. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll, I'll listen to Talking Heads if I want opinionated pieces. Like, I'm a huge fan of like just the facts, ma'am. Give me the dragnet, just the facts. Like. I don't want to hear, and it, it's so obvious in a lot of ways, like the way things are written. Like, okay, this is just getting super heavily opinion. Let me, <clears throat> let me like give you all a kind of like diatribe as a government employee and a public employee. And we were talking about how I work for Go with Management and everything. Good news is no news, and like this is like, and we're going to get into local media and everything. Like, as a person that works for the city of Ocala, I love working for the city of Ocala. I love being a public servant. Best part about my job is I get to give back in, to my community, like in the things that I do 40 hours a week. But you're never going to see in the star banner, Marion County Public Schools successfully transport 30,000 kids oh, right. twice. Right. Listen. <clears throat> today. Ask my wife. I, I tell people all the time, the logistics, that's our biggest logistics mm -hmm. program in Marion County. We have Lockheed. You know, we've got engineering places. The biggest logistics we do is twice a day moving over 30,000 kids. When Before the pandemic, it was over 40,000 kids a day, twice yeah. a day. Yeah, so when I hear people complaining, gosh, I'm getting goosebumps. I'm getting all lit up. Oh, yeah. Dude, did, all like, did you know this was going to trigger me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, go, dude, please. <laughs> because, but, like, as a government employee, it's just yeah. things people take for granted. When, when, <laughs> when someone complains about a bus being a few minutes late, I'm like, mm -hmm. are you out of your freaking mind? Do you know what they do? And then, like... I think about driving with my own kids and how much they annoy me as my own kids. And how many kids per bus? <laughs> right. And I'm like, you're driving no with somebody else's kids and 40 of them or you know, however many it is. Mm -hmm. like, that's Did you know crazy. there's like a whole it, 
It rained in the summer. Did you know there's a whole department like dedicated to the fact that that rain does not stay on the ground? Like there's like a 50 person department. I didn't know that actually. Storm yeah. Yeah. And like you never. Thank there's, you, like, Rachel. No news about them. Oh yeah. yeah, thank you, Rachel. They do a great job out there at Ocala Electric Utility. We're lucky here in Ocala that we have a publicly owned utility. Mm. That thing, but like these are the things, and like it sounds boring AF, but I'm like fascinated behind like the logistics yeah. of these, where you have the city, you have the county. I work in growth management, which is like code licensing, Office of Homeless Prevention, and like I'm sure this is like news we'd like to get. But like it's all it's all like click based and everything, and that's yeah. I think where the fall of local news happens. Yeah. Right, it's sensationalized. You know, what are we going to get? Mm-hmm. And and we, you know, it's been very evident, right? Mm-hmm. But I think that I think that there's an opportunity to break out of that, and I mm-hmm. and I think that a lot of news based sources don't really even understand that. Mm-hmm. I think that they're they still go by the extremist people who are clicking. Mm-hmm. And and don't get me wrong, every now and then I'll find myself getting caught up in like, I'm reading this because I disagree with it, right? Mm-hmm. I want to know, because this this is another thing that I do. I think I've said this before plenty of times on the podcast. I also open up seven news sources. Mm-hmm. When I go, I don't like being inundated with news, but when I decide that, all right, I need to catch up on what's going on, mm-hmm. I open up literally seven sources. I read across all of them and go, all right, what's the different perspective? Yeah, you don't want confirmation. Right. What's, which what's... a lot of people just fall into their circle. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. right. <clears throat> so, but every now and then when I do that, I'll go, I, all right, I'm going to read something from a, a news source that I don't believe, like, I, I, I don't think they're news. I think they're heavily opinionated, but I'll read mm-hmm. it just to see what that opinion is. And I'll get myself a little riled up, and then I'll go, oh, okay, here, I'm, I'm falling into this, right? But mostly speaking, I think consumers are breaking away from that. I think mm-hmm. that you're seeing legacy media, and I'm not trying to sound super conspiracy theorist, as, you know, podcast or whatever, but I think legacy media is changing. I think that you're, you're looking at the numbers, and you're mm-hmm. going, you know what? People don't actually want that. Mm-hmm. You know, they fell into it for a little while. Well, but we're getting look at the New York Times, there's a big pie. <clears throat> and we were just talking about micro celebrity and everything. Why do I enjoy listening to unwanted opinions? Because you're two local guys that I know, and you're probably going to talk about two like local things. Right. Why is podcasting so big these days? Is because it's there's a certain like um, intimacy yeah. like that exists. Right. Like it's more between relatable. like it's more relatable. Like why is Brogan so big right now? Because like he's like a dude. Like you feel like they're sitting around having a conversation. Yep. Why is unwanted opinions going to continue to grow? Because like you're. You know, you and Matt have known each other for 20 years. Right. You can pick up, like, the genuine chemistry between you. And you're going to talk about, like, local issues and everything and things that pertain to it where you're not going to get that from the star banner. Right. And, like, your demo audience, like, I'm sure our chat right now is probably most of our buddies, but it's not just our buddies. It's people, like, in our age range mm-hmm. that, like, you know, we can, like, sit here and talk about the downtown parking garage and, like, mutiny and all that stuff. It's hyper-focused to what you want, where the New York Times wants 30 million subscribers. Right. You will probably right. be happy right. with, like, a hundo. Right. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. 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 So like, and it that's yeah, and that's like where, so like and subscribe. So <laughs> don't forget to hit that like and subscribe yeah. button. And that's like the attention economy and everything. Right. But like the the game has changed. Yeah, and and I think that you're seeing just in general more a more splintered audience for for specialist things anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about uh, sneakers net last week, and mm-hmm. I, it just got me on the mindset of like the things that I'm into and how it's. It's easy to find like people that like those things too. Like one of the th- I'm 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 kind of into comedy now, right? Like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm I'm really enjoying some new comedians, and I'll realize to me like that's my like um, echo chamber, right? Because I'll I'll tell someone like Yo, uh, Mark Gagnon uh, sent me a message, and they're like, What? Gagging out what? What? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, like he's like a comedian or like Andrew Schultz, and they're like, who are you talking about? I'm like, these are like the most famous people to me because that's the little world that I'm living in yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. And it's not just that, like you have these now like certain industry people. Like if I were to tell you about someone in my industry for promotional products, mm-hmm. you know, I, I it's like someone like, oh, I met Mark Cole. I'm like, who, okay, who's that? Like, oh, he's like one of the founders of the industry. You know, like. There's so much you can do now that it's relegated to exactly what you're See, into. and I love, I like, I love, like, especially with social media and everything. The biggest thing about social media, and especially like Facebook for me, like, even with our podcast, which we'll get into in a minute, like, I still like put a lot of things through Facebook. 
And like a lot of people hate Facebook. Facebook is terrible. You like get your own like echo chamber, or whatnot. But you like the thing with social media is you can't just be on it. You have to curate it these oh, days. Right. Yeah. Like if like someone starts like going on rants and everything, or they're too right. loud, <laughs> or they're too like you either snooze them for thirty days, see if you miss them, or you just unfollow them. But like at three snoozes, you get an unfollow. Three snoozes, okay. you're yeah. done. Um, but like the the people you do have, like I love touching into people's hobbies like i love jesse oh, yeah. when you put sneaker stuff on and everything mm -hmm. something i have or like you and cody i think do boots yeah or is it yeah. ryan or is it ryan, ryan and cody ryan and cody yeah. are on about boots and ryan everything. orsman cody clifton yeah in case you guys want to the boot check boys. out the boot you want to know the about boot boots boys. and everything like <laughs> oh please can we call them the boot boys <laughs> no you one? cannot call them yeah. the boot boys the boot boys is mark sykuda's tag team okay uh, i was gonna say yeah the ocala downtown smackdown they have to be like i won't believe that until i I see it in actual physical life, not the metaverse. <laughs> okay. I want to see it anyway, in the actual. Boys are a different thing. Right. But nonetheless, like I love touching on like people's little micro hobbies right. or like specific yeah. hobbies where those Agreed. are worlds like you do like sneakers and everything on like culture curators that I'm just like this is a thing that exists in a world right. and every once and again I'll like go down that YouTube hole and just be yeah. like, <sighs> yep. that's something I place absolutely no value in. Mm -hmm. But boy, do I love. <laughs> seeing like how passionate people get about it and everything right. and like then you see like people's closet full of sneakers and i'm like do you ever wear those but is it like toys that are like mint in box <laughs> yes yeah i like how you're talking all this trash and With one of jacket. your best friends yeah yeah has an entire room like, yeah, dedicated like, fully, to like, toys and, like that's like my thing like i've gotten away from collecting these days yeah. and like more into experiences and whatnot but it's the same thing but it's still like i love seeing things that people are passionate about right and same. that's what's good about social media for the good and the bad like we were talking about the mob, so uh, i'm gonna i'm I, I was gonna save this for later because i do want to go back to downtown but i will say that led me into the Ocalia Nights. So, in case you guys don't know, Greg does a. Uh, what do you. It's. it's You guys live stream as well. We live stream. So, Twitch, speaking of right. video platforms, okay. there's YouTube and then there's Twitch. Right. Twitch is the video game platform. So, we stream Tuesday nights, 7 p.m. on Twitch. We're right here out of the. Um, it's actually Generation Media, which is Ryan Mason, David Lugo. They are right there in the, uh, the power plant business incubator. And we stream Tuesday nights, 7 p.m. We stream Dungeons and Dragons. And then we put everything up on YouTube, and then we're doing things through social media. And then, like, it's the same thing. We're trying to build a community around So it. I'm yeah. very aware of Dun what Dungeons & Dragons is. And I've been invited, and I have once gone. And mm -hmm. it's very much – the concept is very cool to me. Mm -hmm. Typically – and I'm going to choose my words wisely and carefully. Typically, I have a hard time – uh, when people act things out, like mm -hmm. it makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, right? Like secondhand embarrassment, cringy. Yeah. Oh no, the first time uh, you sit at the table and someone's like, "Yeah, all oh, right, man, you're ready to go on yeah. the journey here." So right. Yeah. <laughs> top of the morning to you, Gov. <laughs> right. It's a little weird at first. Yeah. It's... But like, okay. So like, here's the deal. And well, hold on. Let me. Yeah. It's it it's. It has traditionally been hard for me to be around, mm -hmm. even though I like the concept. The game itself, I really like. I just struggle with that. But I watched your guys' stream, and I watched all, like, three hours of it. <laughs> like, I watched Did you watch the Light Up Okalia one? Yeah, yeah. I, I watched the Light Up Okalia one because uh -huh. yours truly was one of the, uh, the characters. Himself, uh, nice. Jesse James was in there so, for a brief second. Yeah. I don't know. But, that. Yeah, you were, too. So, but I watched it, and at first, I'm like, oh, I don't know. If I'm gonna be able to do this. Uh -huh. This is me being brutally honest. Uh -huh. And then, like, I, I got into it, and I, I was like, "Oh, I'm kind of wrapped into the characters now. I'm wrapped mm -hmm. into the storyline, and I'm genuinely enjoying it." And I'm, I'm not saying that like I genuinely enjoyed it. And I was like, "Oh, this is maybe I, maybe I. You just got to get past that little secondhand embarrassment and get into the character." Mm -hmm. I still don't think I could. I couldn't do the voices and all of that. But but watching yeah, you guys do, and that's that. just that's just me, and and that's uh, you know something that I've got to deal with. But but watching you guys do it was genuinely enjoyable, and mm -hmm. it was a storyline that. You know, it, you, it was like a choose your own adventure mm -hmm. that worked out being kind of fun. And, uh, you know, like it was not a storyline that I'd heard before. Well, so here it cool. is. Here's the, the situation with Dungeons and Dragons, and we'll get into this more. Dungeons and Dragons is collaborative storytelling. Like, and it is something that goes like back as far as time begins. Like, you sit around a table and you tell stories. And that's all that Dungeons and Dragons is it's collaborative storytelling. You sit around the table and you roll dice. 
And like it's kind of funny, like it's as complicated or as easy as you want it to be. It can be player versus environment, player versus player. You can have like really complicated rules. You can have really simple rules. But nonetheless, you're sitting around a table with your friends telling a story. Um, my primary group, my snack group, started at TJM Promos nice. back in 2017 when it was Vito's game originally. Yeah. And then Vito had the kid and I ended up taking it over. But nonetheless, Mark Anderson and Jesse are still at my table. And we've been together playing Thursday nights for four years now. It's now mm. me, me, Mark, Chelsea, um, Brandon, and... James Dugan. And then finally, for the first time last week, my wife got to join. It had been three years before my wife finally there to see it at the table. Yeah. Quarantine and all that. And now we are like, these people are like my best friends yeah, because cool. of the adventures that we've been on over the years. Because we've sat around and we have these amazing stories that even though they were fake, they're real to us. Like if you've ever played video games and like a collaborative thing, you know you've had like these adventures. <laughs> yeah. And like we've done all these things in our mind. But, like, we've had, like, three weddings now. Like, Brandon first got married, then Mark got married, then I got married. No. And then, like, and we've been together for, like, four years now and have these phenomenal stories. That's cool. And, like, that's the essence of it. And, like, what we do on stream is one version of the game. Right. Where, like, it's a little more professional and everything. And then, like, we played last night. My wife played in that. And she's like, that's what D&D is. Where we sat around and we made dinner and we sat around the table and, like, we had... <laughs> We, uh, like, for some reason, Brandon got on about beans the week before. So, like, he made a bean dish and Darian made a bean dish. And then in the game, they ended up, like, forming a band. And then because we ate beans that night, the name of their band is now REO Beanwagon. So, like, and that's just, like, something that's going to carry on for weeks now. Right. But, like, that's, and that's the gist of what makes Dungeons & Dragons great is, like, you're sitting around a table, you're telling stories, and in a post-quarantine world, it's going to be bigger than ever. Like the metaverse is garbage. Like in Facebook and everything, it'll happen. But I think in like a post quarantine world, we're going to start moving away from screens. Like one of the best parts about D and D is like even though we play it on screens and everything, it's an analog experience and it's a communal experience. Yeah, communal is is key there for sure. Mm-hmm. Like the um, we're going to go camping. You got to come camping out with uh, us sometime. Like one that's one of our other things. But like when we camp. Like, there's a group of, like, five of us now in, like, our camping group, and we sit around a fire, and we tell stories. And, like, that's, like, and that's the gist of Dungeons & Dragons and that's what cool. makes it so great. I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I hope that uh, more people, you guys have a pretty good following on there. You guys We're starting to get up there that, and everything, so. but, like, I hope to do more. Like, my primary thing that I want to do is Dungeons & Dragons is my second favorite subject next to my wife. Of course. She's got to be the gal on the couch. She's way more interesting. <laughs> but like Dungeons and Dragons is my favorite subject because I can sit here and I can droll on and on and on for hours. We don't, no, we don't have to do that. No, no, no. That'll be fine. <laughs> but like I want to like you're just like I don't think I could ever do it. Like what we do on stream and how you act out and everything and even like the biggest thing which is Critical Role which really opened it up and like they just had a thing come out. They're voice actors. They're going to do the best okay. of it. Yeah. You watch like what we do on Thursday night. We're eating snacks and we're talking about Peacemaker half the time or whatever thing right. me and Mark just watched. And like we barely ever role play or do any of that and those are like the those are the barriers to entry right. that I really like want to break down. Yeah. And actually I got oh, oh. snap. For I've had this you, in the whole time. A set of dice. Hey. And those are going to be for Matt, but they're for oh, you, Jesse. Oh. A set of dice. I thought you only used one die. No, no there's seven so. dice, but you only primarily use the D20, which is the big dice. Is that the 12-sided die? No, it's the 20-sided 20 20 dice. dice. Oh, wow. And that's like one of the best parts about it, too, is you roll Man. dice. Look at that. In case you guys can't see. Yeah. Thanks. So, Zoom in on that, Dave. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> if you would like to come by and play a game sometime, I want to do a first time. People that have never played D&D. Uh, that would be fun. And the best part about it, it's the unwanted opinions of Kelly and Knight's crossover yeah. we've been waiting on. Oh, but the thing about it is, is like I can play a game like we went out to Darian's friend's house up in Space Coast. And sat around and had drinks and ate pizza. And these people had never played D&D before. And I ran a game for them. I'll tell you, the game can be as complicated or as easy as you want it to be. Come sit down with us. I'll play a game with y'all. Don't even look at a character sheet before. You're going to play. You're going to walk out of there like... Oh, love playing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, how long? Is, how long's a game? Three hours. Okay. Like I would like as my advice, like if like you're because there's the dungeon master who runs the narrative, which is like what I do. David Lugo is our primary dungeon master for our ongoing campaign. I do these little one shots, which are like one off stories, and I'll DM. 
But like my like primary rule is like keep it about three hours. Okay. Because like before that, like people start getting antsy and like yeah, just want to yeah, move on. Makes and sense. Everything. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it, and you've got my word that I will come and do a D and D game. I'm telling you, because like I want like people that have never played. Yeah, yeah. Before. I think that'd be fun. Because like you're like I don't know how to play. It's like it's you know what you just roll a dice and then it's all like like I do like you can do like miniatures. And like maps and all that, but I do like a lot of theater in the mind. Yeah. Okay. And I have a video we'll have to like link to it because we have our YouTube channel, Kaylee and Knights, where as a dungeon and I, what makes it great is as a dungeon master, there's always one moment in like a campaign, and we have a video about this where like you have the, these t people around the table with you, and there's something that happens like sometime over the course of it where everybody's just engaged and like they start like cheering or something. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. that's when you know you nailed the campaign. Like that's you've cool. performed. Like I've never right. performed is what's amazing to me, but like somehow I dropped into this. But like you know, there's like like you've been in performances and you've done like improv and everything. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where there's a moment where you have the audience oh, yeah. and like you know you've like nailed the performance. Oh, yeah. Yeah, only one time because it didn't happen. <laughs> I, was <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Do, do, you, yeah. do you know that?" Feeling? Right. No, it's I, I I know exactly what you're saying. I think it's a, a really cool concept, and I've and I have I saw it just when I watched your guys. Um, there, there's probably two or three moments in there where like, mm -hmm. oh, they're all actually engaged in this and working together, and you're like, find yourself somewhat excited for this character. Mm -hmm. I was like, man. I'll tell you that Light Up Okayla One Shot is a primary example where some dungeon masters like do all this prep and world building and everything. I had like five notes scribbled on yeah. like a thing. And even what ended up happening in that particular one is like I had like the gist of like where I wanted the story to go. Right. But what ended up happening, like as these people told these stories, like Nico ended up playing this like little emo kid who was like around town right. that ended up being the linchpin because like they ended up going to the keep and they went to the uh, what did I call it? The art collect the eccentric art yeah. collective known as the Exchange. Okay. And like I had like mentally all these characters lined up where like I had an avatar for Teddy in there, I had an avatar for Jesse James in there, and started them, and like him being the emo kid like was one direction and then darian ended up playing it where like she was just this like stoner reindeer that accidentally took the delivery to the gondola by the pirates rather than the gazebo right. and that ended up becoming the linchpin of the whole campaign we're like i had this whole third act yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like lined up guess, for him you, you but she, like, it just like naturally yeah. translated into that and like that ended up being like the cusp of the whole story that's okay. what made it amazing so we only have a few minutes left so i'm going to bring mm -hmm. it back around because you brought up the keep and mm -hmm. the exchange and all that stuff and i it, something that you and i started talking about before the show and i said save it and so i do want to hit it yeah is we talked about the fact that um, Ocala is contracted to buy the old. I, I said Mount Moriah Baptist Church. I don't think it's Mount Moriah. I can't remember the what church it is. behind the keep. The church the behind the, the keep and down near La Cuisine, and they're going to build another parking garage, which is desperately needed. If you've ever done anything on parking, any is my week, number one pet peeve. Ask anybody. Uh, oh yeah, it's oh terrible. man. Actually, well, cars and pet or cars themselves are starting to become one of my pet peeves. Oh for <laughs> sure. Yeah, if we could walk. Yeah, and on, honestly, that's a, on a side note. Uh, for millennials, one of the biggest requirements or, or one of the biggest uh, wish list items for millennials is um, places within walking distance. I so <laughs> um, I think that, you know, downtown Ocala is starting to head that way for sure. But one of you, well, one of the things that you questions I mean. that you asked was what's what's the peak for restaurants and bars downtown? Like, mm -hmm. when are we going to hit the max of what we can handle? Did we need there? another taco place downtown? That's a bold uh, question. I to mean, but ask. that's like, yeah. that, but like, that's like my question. I mean, like, have I, you had their two dollar tacos? I have not had their two dollar tacos, but like, that's like the question. It's a good question. Like, there is yeah. another. So, like, the thing is going to take Pie's place, mm. which I guess is going to be like some big sports bar thing or whatever. Is it a sports bar? I don't. It's like going to be some fancy bar. Then apparently, there's like two of them coming in over Mellow Mushroom over there. Right. Yeah. There, like, well, there's going to be three, three total there. Yeah. So there's going to be Mellow Mushroom, a burger spot, and another Shuck and Shack. And the, so there's three going in there, and yeah, then there's total, yeah. yeah. So like I'm wondering what like peak downtown is going to be. I, I think not it, like light up Ocala. I'm, I'm talking like just like a Friday night. I right? think it I mean, depends on the parking garage. Honestly, like mm -hmm. if I go down there and I can't find a spot, I immediately go. I'm not going to try to get dinner down here. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just not going to. It's not. I'm, I'm not going to do it. Going to hunter proof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just don't want to wait. You know, we're back in the time frame of. 
I remember one of the first times I had to wait again. You know, it had been years since I had to wait for food. And then now I'm like, oh, man, you know, I'm having to wait 45 minutes to an hour to just get in anywhere right now. So I think I don't think we're, we're there yet. You know, right now, I think that there's still room for it. Now, if there's a, a you know, economic correction, you know, we'll see a different story. But right now, I, I don't think that we're at peak, believe it or not. Yeah, I'm just curious as to what it's going to be. Well, I guess it's just that I want to see more things downtown besides, like, a bar, another bar, and another restaurant. Yeah. I don't know what form those things are going to take, right. be it, like, axe throwing, a better coffee lounge or something. I just feel like we're hitting – I guess that's, like, what I'm thinking is we're hitting peak restaurant and bar. Sure. Where yeah. now we need, like, other things, like maybe more residential – like well, I really like to see more residential the, down there. The, I mean, they're they're putting up more apartments or condos or whatever. Yeah, there's like it. a block going in across from City Hall, right next to Angie Lewis yeah, Farm. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, that's going to be another thing there. So more residential there, and and so here's the thing with those items to come into place. Like w one of the things years ago, and 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 people are like, oh, yo, Ocala just kind of bloomed overnight. It's like, no, it took a lot of people a lot of work many years. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I, I found out when talking to these like uh, larger research firms is they come in and if you're looking for like a larger chain of something to be here, which don't get me wrong, I'd love everything to be local, but you got to have chains too, right? Mm -hmm. So to get those in, like a grocery store, for example, you have to prove resident and median income for them to even get close. So the reason we didn't have any major restaurants downtown, even though downtown is a destination spot, is because most of these larger firms go, well, there's not enough residents and median income there, so we're not going. In. It's got to be within like a you know mile radius. So they weren't coming downtown. So the people that came in, like Mojo, who owns Brook City, Whiskey Kitchen or whatever, which is mm. not Mojo's, but Mojo Barbecue out of like Jacksonville. They they made uh, a smart investment. They said, mm. we th yes, we understand the numbers aren't there, but we think the traffic is. So they came in and it's been great for them, you know. So I think that residences is, is, is huge. Residential locations are huge for the mm. downtown area. And I do agree that we need – Things besides just bars and restaurants, but I'm not mad that more bars and restaurants are coming. Oh, that's fine. But the market like you do just a great has... bar crawl, bar crawl all night in downtown Ocala yeah. these right. days, but which the... they all have their own personalities and scenes. Well. Absolutely, right. like, yeah. yeah, that's the cool and they're part. nice too compared to the scummy bar scenes that have existed in the past in Ocala. Right, but the but the market has to prove that they can be there, and that's the hard part. Is everyone's like, oh yeah, I want this. Well, okay, then you need to go to it and actually enjoy it. Mm -hmm. The biggest um, thing I think Ocala's, it's funny, like the biggest barrier for Ocala and downtown Ocala is a literal barrier, which is 40. 40. Because yeah. yeah. that's going to be the connector yeah. between, like, if you can bring the square and Tuscawilla and the Riley together somehow. Yeah, right. But there's that literal gigantic thing. And then, like, that big plop of industry right in the middle of there, yeah. too. Whereas, like, if that were all just, like, one big blob right. of a downtown like we've been to and many it, other, like, right. little small things. It, it eventually will be. Yeah. You, you're right, though. But it's a it's a... It's a state highway, mm -hmm. and that's the hard. It's not like it's just a you know city or county road. Oh, that's yeah. a state highway that cuts. Let me talk to you about FTA installations. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the like you, you're right. That's probably the biggest barrier. Um, even with things like, I mean, you can tell. I, I've talked about this for years, even before we were the MCs for Light Up Ocala. But Light Up Ocala used to previously just be south of 40 right mm -hmm. and it got to the point where i'm like i don't even want to go even mm -hmm. though i've gone every year since i was a kid it was just way too crammed and then <laughs> boom they got it they were able to close down 40 and open up that north side yeah. and when they did that it was a whole different world you could stretch out a little bit more and it's like man if only we could just do this more often and i think one of these days they're going to figure something out whether it's a, a a nice pedestrian you know overhead crosswalk or something i don't really know yeah it's, it's one of the bit or just like putting something down there but like i think once there's more things there besides like sialita and everything right. but i like, i can tell you working for the city it's one of their primary things is to bring those yeah. two areas together it, it'll it'll happen one of these days and i think that those that invest into that area long term. It's oh yeah, like off. I really wish I could buy property under the water tower right now. That yeah. area is good. Oh, like yeah. those are some. Oh, that's the the new. It's going to be gentrified for sure. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. like you want to know where gentrification is coming in Ocala? I'd love to buy a property, but we won't even get into property taxes yeah. for in Ocala. Yeah, all of that. Darian and I will be at First Friday Art Walk tonight. All right. Oh, at the uh, Art Army is going to be on the square across from the kitchen, doing uh, takeaway art. 
Okay. So come by and see us. We are also giving away two pieces of uh, Ocalian Knights merch. Very so we have cool. two T-shirts we're giving away. The password is Ben Bowerton. Okay. But like, come and see me and Darian tonight on the square. Greg, thank you so much for joining us. Everyone on Facebook, and if you're listening on the podcast, thank you so much for listening. Workspace Collective, we out.